Welcome back to the second part of our NiFi cluster upgrade tutorial. Well, this is actually the first part of the upgrade tutorial, but in the last tutorial, we saw how we can install a NiFi cluster. All right, so what we're going to do now, let's go ahead and create some resources on this newly installed cluster. If you haven't installed the cluster and you know how to check my previous tutorial, I got everything set up there for you. Just copy and paste and everything will work. Let's generate or let's add a generate flow file and also let's push, uh, I don't know, update attribute processor. Let's save it. Let's run it once. What I'll do, I'll also create a template of this. I'll say my 1.9. 19.1 template save this one it was created successfully and if we look here yep we do have a template and got it let's leave it like that cool what we're going to do next as per best practices of upgrading a NiFi instance or a NiFi cluster i'm going to walk you guys through what do we need to do so first before you upgrade your NiFi stop all the processor to prevent ingestion of data uh, and allow all the NiFi follow process processors that i have queues to empty completely otherwise you're gonna end, you're gonna lose whatever it's in the queues back up all the nars customs if you have them in, in for this task if you have any custom nars make sure you take backup of those download the new version that you want to upgrade to or you want to downgrade to create a new directory for the new version of your nifi copy the configuration of authorizers from current NiFi installation to the new version, update the bootstrap notification services, add the custom logging from logback to your new NiFi installation, configure the login identity provider on your new version, update all properties in the NiFi properties in the new version. So we're gonna cover all of these points while we're going through this tutorial. But first, let's go back to our NiFi and do the first step, make sure there's no queuing. All right, let's do that. The old, the way you can see, we can actually see them here if there are any queue. So that's the overall state of your processors. You have any queues or not, make sure in the root. All right, next what we're gonna do, we're gonna shut down this NiFi installation. So let's go ahead and go to OPT cluster NiFi node one binary uh, and knife knife.sh stop so now this cluster is going down ha uh, ha ha i'm not too good with jokes but um anyway that's it cluster is down let's go on to the next step let's instantiate this property because this is going to be a property that's going to help us replace values in the knife property and next what i'll do we're going to go and download the latest version the latest and greatest 1.20.0 make sure you are in this location as it as per previous tutorial let's go download and while this downloads i'll take a break and we'll pause we'll be back when this is fully downloaded all right it took a bit of time but we managed to download it so we have the latest nifi binaries here so let's go ahead first and create a new folder location for this installation. Unzip everything inside there. Next, what we'll do, we're going to cover all the resources. I mean, not cover. We're going to copy the authorizers. We're going to copy the bootstrap notification, logback, logging identity, state manager, management, flow, XML as well. So what does the authorizer do or what do we use it for? For those who don't know, basically it's a configuration file used by NiFi to define the user authentication and authorization mechanism. So the bootstrap notification, is good. it's a configuration file used by NiFi to define how to send notification and to whom. So if you use this by default, don't stress about it, but if you go into a more depth, um, let's say use of NiFi, you kind of know, you kind of need to know what those configurations are. Logback, it's used by Logback, a Java-based logging framework, and NiFi employs that. The logging identity provider, the logging identity provider, it's used to configure different ways in which user can be authenticated when using or logging into NiFi. Example is 
LDAP or OpenID Connect providers. The state management, it's used to configure the state management settings. It defines how the application state is managed and persistent, including data such as flow configuration, component status, and user information. And finally, the flow XML.gz. I think this is the most important part when you looking into doing an upgrade. Well, it's the file used by NiFi to store the data flow configuration of a particular instance or a particular cluster. It contains the definition of all the processors and all the assets you currently have in your NiFi installation. By default, NiFi creates this file when it starts the first time. And then every time a change happens in the flow, it will update the particular file. Um, it's the most common use case to transfer the data flow from one configuration to another. So let's go ahead and run the script here. Basically, we'll, in this example, we're going to copy from the existing node cluster, which is a 1.19.1, to the new installation. So let's go ahead and run this command. Next, what we'll do, I have prepped up a function, a bash function, that will help us to move properties between my old NiFi properties file, which is the bootstrap and the new NiFi installation. Why did I have, why, why won't I overwrite? What happens with each version? Um, new parameters are added. So if you would to add, um, let's say if you were to copy one particular file over another from a newer version, you will probably drop some new parameters. So what this particular script does, it loops over each of the file and will create replacement commands on the existing attributes or parameters that come from my source. And in case I have any new attributes or parameters in the new configuration, I'm not going to drop them out. So let's go ahead and run this command and you're going to see the output. I made a question to put it in as an echo because I don't want them to be run blindly. Otherwise, you know, you might miss some. All right, so this is going to generate me this set command and not set, it's a proper place. You're going to copy that and you're going to paste it in your terminal. And voila, that's it. You already applied it to the new configuration. Next, we're going to go into the NiFi properties and apply the same logic. Copy them, provide them with an old and new. Copy the script. It's going to be a bit bigger, obviously, because it has more properties. Let's go to the top, copy them, a couple of lines, and then paste them here. Press enter, and the property paste is going to. And finally, at the end, what we're going to do, we're going to add we're going to run this proper place where I got to, I want to make sure that the host and port are empty for HTTPS. Uh, the protocol is secure. It's set to fault. My HTTP uh, port and host are set to these values. And that's my sensitive property. And at the last, we're going to comment some of the properties. Since I'm running it in an unsecure manner, I need to comment these properties. Otherwise, the installation will fail or it will bitch about not having some keys set. Great, so now what we're gonna do now, we're gonna start our newly installed installation and we're gonna open and see if it's still part of the cluster. Like, I mean, we're gonna open the same, uh, we're gonna open the same UI. All right, so let's wait for this to run. I'll probably pause until it completes. Okay, so I can see here in my log that um, the Harvey it's up and running, uh, the Cluster has elected his master or his leader, and now the application is available to be consumed at my local host port 111. And let's go to our browser and press enter. All right, so we can see we're still getting the same UI, but that doesn't tell us nothing, you know? Between one version to another, there's not much changes. So we're gonna figure out that we actually upgraded. We're gonna go to about, and now we can see our version here. Another thing I wanna check and make sure that this was a valid migration or upgrade is to look into my templates and see if we still have, yep, we still have the old template here that was created so that that's an action of the flow file uh, gz that moves that thing around uh, we can also drag the processors on and we can see that they're stamped with 1.21 and the number of processors obviously increased uh, let me look at one processor that yeah so you see this is something that was added to the latest version so basically that is a wrap on how you can upgrade a cluster to a newer version Obviously, they will come or probably you might have different configuration when you're going through an HTTPS approach or when you're going through an upgrade that you, it's done via, I don't know, a Docker container. If you have NiFi running on Fargate or on ECS, or if you have NiFi running on 
EC2 instances. I'll probably cover that, but again, that's going to be as an outcome of a request. I normally, these are extensive tutorials and this is, I would say, the most generic and people can relate to. Uh, you can borrow ideas from this upgrade and use some of those, uh, some of those scripts to help you and let's say uh, to fit your purpose. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you in the next.